bit even less than that. But I was almost at the point where I was thinking, well, looks like we're going to have to stick in a few thousand she oaks or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we might. Yeah. We maintain it for production. I think we yeah. may. Yeah. But definitely not a cropping. Yeah. Yep. You don't crop it three years out of four or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so okay, Graham, as far as the sort of like, this, the key thing would be monitoring the water table in terms of your dis as a that yeah. drives your management your management decisions. Oh yeah. That water table, what it's doing. Even um, in the next little yeah. tongue of yep. the creek, yep. or the river. Yep. Three paddocks up. And the tool that you're using is lucerne, well perennials, but lucerne and tall wheat grass to do that. Yep. In rotation with um, with wheat, barley? Uh, we or wouldn't barley. say wheat on this barley. paddock. Barley. Yeah, barley's our number one. Yep. And this paddock nearly always has been oats actually. Okay. Oh. Although I seeded barley the other year when I planted the lucerne, yeah. I took a punt on it being a dry year. Yep. And for well, with barley we've got rye grass control. Yep. With wheat I sorry, with oats. I haven't got the same rye grass control. Yep. But we have basically gone away from pure loosen. Yep. What we planted under the two rivers scheme, which was the second paddock up, and then some up about four or five paddocks that direction. There, uh, the pure loosen was either feast or famine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had loosened beautiful up to your knees virtually and extremely good. But once they ate that loosen, you had to take them off. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a clover pasture in between, you've still perhaps got to take them off, but the graft doesn't go as high and it doesn't go as low. Yeah. And your grazing patterns. So tell us about the compatibility of the lucerne and the tall wheatgrass. How are you finding that? I think it's really good. Mm. Except, I think where you've got a tall wheatgrass, you need to look at the patch as a permanent pasture. Yeah. Whereas the loosen can come in and go out. Yeah. That fence just there. We've done the unorthodox thing there. I've got a paddock inside of a paddock. Well, that's about oh, it's 14 hectares, just over 30 acres of very rough crab holes. Oh yeah. And we've taken it out and put it down to pasture permanently. Tall with grass. Yeah, it's actually got more loosen than tall wheat grass at the moment. <laughs> it's also got a bit of a uh, the wide leaf fella, flat fella. Uh, um, chicory. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looked very good, mm. particularly on another patch further down. We fenced out. Mm -hmm. There's only nine acres of crab holes. So we completely fenced it out. And, and she could grow on those crab holes? Yeah. Uh, the chicory was, is very good down on that patch. Mm. It amazed us actually mm. how much we germinated. But out there it's probably not as good. But the loosen is the top of the crab holes, you've got your loosen, and then at the bottom you've got nothing. It's up and down. And that piece is probably grazed fairly close to the ground at the moment mm. because we've got that little mob of sheep sitting on it. Yeah. 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 So it's three species, it's it's the chicory, it's the lucerne and it's the tall wheatgrass in some part yep. that you're finding. Yep. Well the chicory was a, a sort of a trial exercise. Yeah. Other people were talking about it and we said right we have a few bags and we stuck it in. Yeah. And it definitely, oh the germination was good, excellent. Mm. 